Yo YouTube, what is going on? Jake Felzine here guys, and today we are talking about two of my favorite cameras. I won't say they're my favorite, as you guys know, if you've been around with the channel, we are in an ongoing drawn out series called the Road to the Perfect Camera in which I am comparing the a7 III, the GH5S, and the Blackmagic Pocket 4K with the single goal to get to a finalized, you know, one final decision which camera is the perfect camera for Jake Felzine. But today I wanted to do a little sub episode. I didn't figure it really fit into the comparison of the three, talking about how I feel the a7 III and the GH5S are the two perfect complementary travel YouTuber running gun cameras. Let's get right on into it. So today guys, I just wanted to highlight how I feel these two cameras really complement each other for a run and gun travel YouTuber kind of setup. Maybe you have one, maybe you have neither, you're trying to decide between the two. Maybe you're trying to decide if you pick up the other one. Today I wanna to give you some insight on why I really think the two of them work perfectly together. I mean, as you'll find in this video, they really sort of pick up the, the slack where the other one leaves off and they just make for a great complimentary set of cameras. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. But Jake, don't ramble, let's get right on into it. Guys, first things first, let's talk about the obvious, sensor size. The a7 III is a full frame sensor. You should know that, but in case you didn't, the a7 III is full frame and the GH5S is sort of, Micro Four Thirds, I guess technically it's Micro Four Thirds. It's a little bit bigger. It's a bigger sensor, so it's not quite that two times crop factor. I think it's around a 1.8, if I'm not mistaken, which when I compare it to some of the other Micro Four Thirds cameras that I've used, it is a bigger sensor, which does come into play, but it's not massively different. It is still significantly smaller than the Sony, and that has its pros and cons. Let's talk about that. Do you like to do photography? If that's the case, there's really no comparison here. The a7 III, I, I, and again, somewhat personal preference, I just love full frame photography. Ever since I've gotten the a7 III, I really feel that my Instagram grid has been looking very good, and I've been having a ton of fun taking photos. There's just something about that f2.8 full frame look that you just can't beat. I don't even have my hands on any primes yet, so I just can't even imagine how much fun I'm gonna have with this camera with photography if I get an E-mount prime. But even with an f2.8 lens, I'm finding that the focal ranges that I'm getting on this camera and the look just is something that is way more fun, it feels way more artistic, and it just looks more professional from a photography standpoint. I will also say that the resolution on the a7 III IV photos is much better than the GH5S, and so again, really in this category, if you have both, the a7 III makes a super convincing argument for taking amazing photos, and you leave the GH5S in the bag. Now, but speaking of photos, instead of leaving that GH5S in the bag and taking photos with the a7 III, why don't you pull out that GH5S, stick it on a tripod, and get a killer time lapse while you're taking photos with the a7 III, or filming with the a7 III. The a7III's time lapse feature, well, it has it. You're able to take interval photos but it doesn't make a video in camera. Maybe this is important to you, maybe it's not for me personally. If I'm making a video, nine out of 10 times, 9.8 out of 10 times, the rendered video file that I get from the GH5S from a time lapse is generally good enough or totally satisfactory for my video, and I don't even use the still photos that it takes to make the time lapse. Now again, if you're like a time lapse professional, you want to use those raw files, put it in a time lapse piece of software after the fact. Both cameras can get the job done for you, but what I like about this, again, they complement each other. Well, I can have both cameras working and depending on what I'm shooting, again, if it's YouTube run and gun, I'm gonna just use the generated MP4 from the GH5S and it looks fantastic. Okay, so we've gotten all of the photography pieces out of our system. Let's start diving into the video specs, which is what I really care about. Again, where one falls short, the other picks up the slack. The a7 III with that full frame sensor gets you that full frame commercial look. You just can't get that on the GH5S with Micro Four Thirds glass. Yes, depending on how fast it is, how good your aperture is, 
it can look close, but I just find that time and time again, with this f2.8 lens that I have, I've got the Tamron 28 to 75 on the Sony, time and time again consistently, I am getting that commercial full frame look from this camera, and guys, I'm just loving it for my video projects. I think it looks so good. And as I said before, GH5S has a smaller sensor, but it has better specs. So say you need a little bit more juice in your video, the GH5S takes over where the a7 III cannot. And what I mean by this is that the a7 III shoots 8-bit video. It has good dynamic range. It's some of the best 8-bit I think I've ever used out of any of my cameras. I really like the look coming out of the a7 III, but depending on what you're doing in post, you might need those extra specs. You might need a camera that just has a little bit more punch for video, and that's where the GH5S starts to crush. We're talking cinema 4K, 4K at 60 frames per second, 10-bit, 4K at 24 frames per second, 10-bit, full HD at 60 frames per second. And the importance of 10-bit, for those of you that don't know, means that things like green screens, intensive color grades in post are going to be much easier and look and turn out so much better with the GH5S than they would with the Sony. Again, I really like how this camera looks. Coming out of camera, the 8-bit, I think it looks really good, but if you gotta do some heavy stuff in post, maybe you're throwing it into DaVinci, you wanna get a really stylized color grade, the a7 III is gonna fall apart much faster. You're gonna have a lot less stuff to play with. And again, we're seeing another instance where the GH5S crushes where the a7 III cannot. This one's a little bit random because technically I think the GH5S can do this, but the a7 III with its full frame sensor, prime lenses, f2.8 lenses, whatever the case may be, in low light is a phenomenal camera. I just gotta say it guys, the low light coming out of the a7 III looks so good and it just provides that extra flexibility as a run and gun filmmaker or YouTuber. Lighting isn't always perfect, maybe you're kind of able to just get a little bit of light from a you know random source. You got a lot of flexibility with the a7 III whereas with a smaller sensor, you just don't get that good low light performance. Now I will say this argument very much is the case if you're shooting with a GH5. With the GH5S, you actually get very good low light performance due to the slightly bigger sensor, the lower megapixel count, so the photo sites are actually quite a bit larger, and you've got dual native ISO, meaning that at that higher ISO value, you're gonna get a cleaner image out of the GH5S. So even though it's not as good in low light, it's actually incredible for a micro four thirds kind of camera. If you guys are more interested in the GH5, then this is definitely a factor. The a7 III, from everyone that I've talked to, I haven't used the GH5, but from everyone I've talked to, the a7 III crushes the GH5 in low light. Another great video topic, let's talk about autofocus. This one might be obvious, but the a7 III is picking up the slack that the GH5S is sucking at. I'm sure you've noticed, I've been switching cameras here. There's probably a lot of moments where the GH5S, which I'm shooting in continuous autofocus with the newest and greatest firmware, is really missing its focus. It's hunting, it's going all over the place. Whereas most likely, depending on what I've been doing with my hands, I like to talk with my hands, the a7 III has probably stayed pretty much 100% locked on my face and you're not seeing any weird hunting or any of that gross Panasonic autofocus that we've all learned to hate. a7 III has phenomenal autofocus, something you can count on, whereas with the GH5S, you can't quite count on it. Next thing that I wanna talk about, guys, is slow motion. Now, this one's a little bit of a mixed bag. I will say, in general, I feel like the slow motion coming out of the a7 III typically looks better. Now, just to be clear, the slow motion coming out of both of these cameras, anything above 60 frames is both 8-bit, so you're not getting any kind of better codec there from either of them. If you're shooting 60 at 1080, you can get that 10-bit 422 out of the GH5S, which is incredibly fantastic, but let's just say 120 and above. When it comes to slow motion, I typically find that the Sony slow motion looks better, 
but you do have more options with the GH5S. I think the 120 coming out of the A7 III is beautiful. I think it looks cooler, it looks more commercial. Again, it's got that YouTuber look more so than the GH5S, but the GH5S can go all the way up to 180 frames per second and even 240 frames per second which is kick-ass. If you're kind of a slow motion junkie, maybe you just get some really fast glass, adapt some full frame glass onto the GH5S, and it is a lot of fun to play around with that 180, 240 frames per second. Not a lot of cameras at this price point have those kind of slow motion options, so maybe that's something you want to consider. But if 120 frames per second is totally slow enough for you, which it is for most of us, I think I gotta give it to the a7 III, it looks really good. But again, if you've got both, more flexibility, and that's the whole point of this video. Next topic, do you need a flip screen for vlogging? GH5 has a flip screen, you can see yourself, you don't need a monitor. a7 III does not have a rotating flip screen. You need a monitor to see yourself or your phone, there's ways to get creative, but again, one has it, one doesn't. Is a full-size HDMI output important to you? GH5S has it, A7 III does not. Guys, let's hit you with another one. Let's talk about lenses and why I think these cameras work great together. When it comes to packing your bag, if you wanna be run and gun, if you wanna be lightweight, but you want to pack that two camera punch to be a real mobile powerhouse of a videography unit, the nice thing about these cameras is you have these super small micro four third lenses with the GH5S, which is fantastic, and then with my Sony a7 III, I have only ever bought one lens for it, which is the Tamron 28-75, to because that really, so far, has been the only lens that I need. So when it comes to packing a bag, it's actually really easy. My zoom lenses are very small on the GH5S, my primes are very small on the GH5S, so it's easy to fit all of that into a bag, as well as the Sony, rocking the Tamron and I don't need any other additional glass. Super small kit to bring along and it just kind of highlights how having both of these cameras gives you a ton of flexibility and means you can pack very light. So Jake, what is the point of this video? Well guys, I just wanted to highlight why I think these cameras work so well and personally why I'm so excited for the future when it comes to outdoor adventures hiking, mountain biking, which of course are things I'm gonna to try to get more and more back into as summer is ramping up here in Idaho. I love making outdoor videos and I'm super excited to have both of these cameras in my wheelhouse. They're gonna be fantastic for this. We'll probably do a revisit video talking through, you know, in real time why these cameras work so well, showing these kind of things that I've been talking about today, but I couldn't be more stoked to have both of them for these adventures. And really that's the takeaway, but if you have one of them and you've been tempted to maybe pick up the other, this video is giving you that confidence that they work great together. If you have neither of them and you're trying to decide, I hope that maybe some of the points I talked about today gave you some visibility into why you might pick one over the other, depending on what you want to shoot. But if there's one final thing I could leave you guys with, if you're trying to decide between these two cameras, you can't really go wrong. Either rent them and try to figure out which one you like better, or if it's not in your budget to rent and you're just saving up to buy one of them, you're gonna be happy with either of them. Just make your best educated decision. They're both phenomenal cameras and I would recommend them for all of the reasons I talked about today. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button if you're new around here. Welcome to the Creativity From Constraint family, the Jake Felzine family. I love making these videos, guys. I hope you love watching them. Hit me up with some comments down below. Let's chat and with that, Stay safe, stay healthy. Don't forget as always that creativity comes from constraint and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you guys.